Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss uh, degree semester 5 unit 1 prose lesson that is uh, what's the language of the future written by Henry Hitchings. So let's begin. So before we move on to the prose lesson it is important to address these uh, pre-reading activities. There are a few questions given here students. They test your knowledge, your previous knowledge about the languages. How many languages do you know? Where, in what context and for, for what purpose do you use English? So on and so forth. So out of these nine questions, I want uh, to draw your attention to this question especially. What impact do you think the spread of English has had on other Indian languages? Like other Indian languages, we have our own mother tongue like Telugu, uh, Hindi, Gujarati, Tamil, Kannada, Urdu and all. So are we using them so frequently when we go out, we do not use, we uh, hesitate to use our own mother tongue. Instead, we try to use English language. So this is the effect English has had on their languages, Indian languages. And you should think why uh, it has happened, the reasons behind English gaining supremacy or own mother tongue okay so that is one question i want you to focus your attention and the next one is if some other language were to emerge as the global language do you think people would still learn english so we have all understood that english is the supreme language now it is a dominating language whichever part of the world you go you rely upon english none other other languages so in case of English, in case of other language tries to dominate, do you think what would happen to English language? Do you still believe that English will remain supreme forever or some other language is going to dominate English? So that uh, you are supposed to discuss in the class, students. And then the last one, why do you think some languages like Sanskrit, although rich in themselves, are no longer used widely? Just now I was talking. Uh, English is not allowing other languages to uh, be used in the different parts of the world. Only English is being used. So this really drives us to an important discussion how English has become a supreme language. Now this is about the essay uh, and the author. What's the language of future is an excerpt from Hitchin's book, The Language Wars, A History of Proper English which was published in 2011. So this is the book from which this uh, your lesson is taken. Okay, the language was, those who are interested, you can buy that book or browse uh, online and read it. So it's very interesting. Okay, and uh, uh, this talks about, your lesson talks about English fever. Just now I was telling you that English is the supreme language now. So it has also been described as a fever. It means people are mad after English in the present and the challenges that the language is likely to face in the near future, if at all any challenges are there. Okay, so we are going to discuss all these things. Before that, no, we just let us have an overview of the lesson which you are going to uh, learn now. The lesson outlines and depicts the history of international language. What is international language? English. Then the development of English moving from its positions. Positions means Sometime back in India, if you take in before 18th century, there was no language called English in India students. But now you see wherever you go, you find English only. How English is becoming an international language and how native speakers will likely be left behind as bilingualism becomes a prized skill. Who are the native speakers? The people whose first language is English like Britishers, Americans and all. Those are the native speakers. Uh, will it be a challenge for them if they are not bilinguals? Should they be satisfied only with English or should they also learn some other languages? So these are the issues we are going to discuss in the lesson students. And uh, yeah, this is the first paragraph. I would like you to number the paragraphs in your textbook student. That will really help you to understand the lesson very clearly. So this first paragraph talks about two important issues. That desire to learn English is insatiable. There is no end. You cannot say, yes, I have learned English completely. Uh, whatever you learn, still there will be a lot left to learn. Insatiable. You cannot quench the thirst. It's like an ocean learning a language. 
okay and and english is like a lingua franca it serves as a lingua franca this is one of the reasons why india has uh, english has become such a um, famous and the popular language now what is lingua franca it is a common language we don't speak telugu or tamil or kannada or urdu uh, in other parts of the world we speak only english so that is a common language that is called as the lingua franca so this lesson at the end of the lesson you also should be able to tell is there any other language which could become the lingua franca or the common language throughout the world so this is discussed in the uh, first paragraph students and apart from that um, a recent study has suggested that among students of the united arab emirates the arabic is associated with tradition home religion culture school arts and social sciences whereas english is symbolic of modernity work higher education uh, like commerce economics and science and technology though arab emirates you know it is uh, traditionally following the educational system but it has to rely on english because it is the modern language and many of the literature the books are printed in uh, books like commerce economics science and technology are printed in english so even the staunch believers of their own language the united arab emirates has to depend upon english in their educational system so in the first paragraph these are the issues discussed students hope you understood them okay then they also describe english as as an hap as a happy accident what is this accident actually we will try to learn okay so english has spread because of british colonialism we all know that in india before 18th century before the establishment of east india company there was no english in our country only arabic and sanskrit were taught arabic was taught in madrasas and sanskrit was taught in gurukulas okay and ever since this britishers have entered into our country in the name of trade english has entered into our country and this second paragraph talks about the reason why english has spread okay and uh, this is also become the auxiliary tongue any idea what is meant by auxiliary tongue students your mother tongue is your first tongue and the auxiliary is the secondary language so sometimes you know we neglect our mother tongue we depend more on the auxiliary tongue or the second language so english as a second language uh, there are native speakers even though there are many more who use english as a second language than there are native speakers okay native speakers are using english we can understood but the other than the native speakers we are also using english as a first language not as a auxiliary tongue okay and these are the estimate students uh, 500 million second language speakers are there it seems and uh, this is about the third paragraph and now we are just going into the origin of english so the question arises where is where did this english come from so the history tells that this is the european country students and this is british so there are a tribal people angles and saxons they moved from europe to britain and they settled like colonies in british okay angles and saxons so this is from the central europe they have migrated these are the angles and the saxons student and their language angles and saxons language is called as old english you combine the two words students angles and saxons it becomes english okay gradually it become english so that is old english and that is how english has originated actually speaking there is no origin for english language it's not an original language students it is actually it is collected all the vocabulary and the patterns are collected from different languages from different parts of the world that's why whenever you refer to the dictionary you find if you look up for the, any meaning of any word you will also find a phrase called derived from latin derived from greek derived from french like that you know from all other languages these words are derived and i think you will be surprised to know that recently they have taken some words from telugu language also like ayyo ayya and from urdu abba acha like that you know many words have been english sized that means they have been accepted into the oxford dictionary 
okay it will be very surprising that's why i tell that english is not an original language so that is about the english origin student and the happy accident uh, when did this english come into our country into our country it came into 1835 when lord macaulay is very infamous in our country it is not a popular very very infamous he throw he identified the greatness of uh, uh, india and then look at the way he writes i have traveled across the length and breadth of india and i have not seen one person who is a beggar that rich was our country who is a thief such wealth i have seen in this country such high moral values people of such caliber that i do not think we would ever conquer this country he is giving up his hopes unless we break the very backbone of this nation which is a spiritual and cultural heritage and therefore i propose that we replace her old and ancient education system mark these words students this is happening in 18th century replace ancient education system for culture for if the indians think that all that is foreign and english is good and greater than their own that means english the indian should think that english is greater than their culture they will lose their self esteem their native culture and they will become what we want them a truly dominated nation then only britishers can dominate them so this was predicted in 18th century by lord macaulay one of the governor generals okay and uh, he recommended also that immediately stop the printing uh, by the east india company of arabic and sanskrit books that was the first recommendation he made students stop printing arabic and sanskrit books now start printing english books so the, that supports the traditional education beyond the sanskrit college at banaras and the mohammedan college at delhi so at delhi and banaras only this educational institutes are the universities were there before the britishers entered in the country so this so their intention was uh, to they should not the company east india company should not continue to support the traditional education only english should be promoted so that was uh, their intention students and it was totally strengthened by this person called lord macaulay he is the one who is, who played a key role for the english to be introduced into english so this was a little bit of background i wanted to share you uh, before we discuss all the other issues students now there is again another interesting fact uh, you'll be surprised to know this okay uh, in some cases the devotion appears religious and can involve what to consider look like a self mortification this is very interesting self mortification means causing damage to their own body parts and the reason will be surprised especially the koreans pay for their children to have an operation that lengthens the tongue doesn't it sound surprising weird yes so they even go to the extent of getting their children operated so that the length of the tongue increases and do you know why the length of the tongue should be increased just it enables them to produce the letter r and the letter i there there, there is a peculiar way of uh, pronouncing this r with the rolling r and then e okay the tongue plays an important role in producing these uh, letters but look at the extent to which people go the lengths people will go in order to learn english the, the, the author says they were seduced by the belief they were attracted by the belief that linguistic capital equals economic capital means if they are perfect in the supreme language called english their economy uh, economy also will develop so th this is again a weird kind of uh, uh, incident student which happens in uh, among the koreans and that is the extent to which the belief goes on now watch this little video clipping how the letters are produced what role does the tongue play in producing r and e and before that you know i would like to show you the picture of the operation okay it is called as lingual phrenectomy lingual phrenectomy uh, below the tongue you know there is a small uh, um, nerve like thing which connects the tongue to the lower part of the mouth it is called as frenulum so when they cut open this frenulum the tongue elongates the tongue becomes longer and it will touch the upper palate 
so that you know the letter r and i are pronounced clearly without any problem so this is how they uh, i mean impact the children to learn english okay so let's now watch the video clippings now let us look at the pronunciations this is the tongue this part is called as the tongue and then uh, when these two sounds a uh, and then e sounds are pronounced how the movement of the tongue is taking place you can see this is the nose mouth and the tongue when e is pronounced the tongue raises and touches the upper palate that you have to notice this is the reason the koreans get their children uh, children's tongue get operated so that it elongates and touches the uh, upper palate okay take a look at it now Ah, ah, e. 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 See how it is raising. Letter R is really difficult. So let's get right into it and talk about the letter R. Now, especially in some parts of Scotland, some people roll their R's. Now, what does that mean? It means. So now we have discussed uh, how the Koreans are very, very particular about uh, taking the care of their children in pronouncing the English languages. They go even for self modification. Okay. Now, um, yeah, especially the main ones, the position of English, the challenges for English are. in the dominant world the spanish and the mandarin chinese are not at all interested in promoting this language students but they are also helpless because they cannot promote their languages spanish and chinese so let us move into paragraph 5 here he talks about the main challenges and the long history of people using the language for anti english ends there are people who oppose the wide publicity of uh, english because there are two reasons students uh, englishness or britishness or americanness there is a strong rivalry between the britishers and the americans regarding the pronunciation the structure and the grammar okay there is a rivalry going on so this is one biggest challenge english has to face for instance many writers whose first language has not been english have infused their english writing with foreign flavors that means they are adding flavors to the english language that's why i told you english does not have originality do you allow your mother tongue to be changed by some other language no but here english is undergoing lot of changes students okay and the, it is also appears to be very crazy the entrepreneur li yang has developed crazy english and an orthodox teaching method so they i told you they are adding their own local flavors okay and here uh, this uh, teacher has involved a crazy english i um, mean method teaching method which involves a lot of shouting he made he makes his students shout a lot okay this lee explains is the way for chinese to activate their internal international muscles so yes speech does um, depend upon the muscular movement students you have many speech organs which have to move properly to pronounce the sounds correctly so his agenda is patriotic and his slogans is conquer english to make china strong doesn't it sound crazy so you have to conquer english to make china strong it seems that means indirectly is act uh, is accepting the supremacy of chair english that is very and coming to the next paragraph the embrace of english in the world's two most populous countries means two most populous that is the china and the spanish means that the language is changing some of the changes are likely to prove disconcerting for native speakers the englishness of english is being diluted do you understand what it means by diluted students diluted means we speak english in our own Well, even in uh, in our country also we don't speak english as the native speakers neither we follow the british english nor we follow the american english we follow our own indian english so we change we dissect the language we change the pronunciation we add code switching that means we add our own mother tongue words into english 
in whatever way we want we are just making the changes so non native speaker that is we of english often comment that they are finding con find conversing with another easier than sharing talk with the native speakers that's what we are not comfortable speaking with the native speakers but we are comfortable in speaking in our own english that is indian english already many people who learn english do so with little or no intention of conversing with its native users whatever they use we don't uh, bother so this is the eighth paragraph so, uh, students at the same time native speakers of english tend to assume that their ability in this potent language makes it unimportant to learn other language this is again another um challenge students english uh, native speakers they think once their language is supreme what is the need for them to learn other languages they think very high of their language and it is unimportant to learn other languages but the reality is different british companies often miss out and export opportunities because of a lack of relevant language skills this is very important point students the challenges english language is facing so they cannot promote their own business with the other countries they don't know the language that is bilingualism they should be bilingual all the other countries like finland germany uh, france and all italy and all they don't rely on english uh, maximum okay the next one is britain's real black gold in is non north sea oil there is a north sea and the, there are lot of oil producing well students which really adds to the economy of british but uh, here they say it's not the oil which is adding to the economy but it is the english language which is adding to the economy it seems sounds very crazy okay this is the oil rig students uh, in the british country uh, country and this should add to the economy okay which is found in the north sea you can see the um, large the um, the wells which are considered helipad also is there where a, a helicopter also can land on these oil rigs so britain's real black gold is not the north sea oil but it is the english promoting british english and you'll be surprised that the oil corporates the british oil corporates are promoting the english language and uh, there is one person robert philipson panchili says panchili means in a satirical manner he says english for business is business for english look at the irony in this english they are doing business with english language it seems that has become their english not the oil which is adding to the economy but while english is being pushed that means pushed means forcibly it is being introduced into the countries it is also being pulled are we not learning english with a fascination don't we add a kind of status to the english speaking persons rather than our own mother tongue so that is called as pulled we have our own interest in learning the language and this is the last paragraph students the consequences are complex some it would seem are not intended even as vast amounts are spent on spreading british english the reality is that english is taking on more and more local color what is this local color students i told you just now we speak english in our own way and then the number of englishes this is a very weird word so we don't add i mean plurals for the language but here it is added why because there are number of englishes like there are how many our states in our country those many englishes are spoken for example if you take the northern part of our states there is no sh sound they, they do, for example if you take the word english they say uh, english examination they say ex examination mera beta examination likhne ko gaya like that the northern parts and if you come to the eastern there is no s sound uh, they say sh only for example saumya they say shaumya sh is added so that is the meaning of english is go to the telugu states uh, for paper they say paper paper chadvara aunty paper chadvara so the, we add our own local color to the english that is the meaning of this english student not only the states even the how many our countries are there in the world there are so many englishes like you have the japanese english singaporean english chinese english 
Indian English, Rus Russian English, American English, British English, so on and so forth. So this is the meaning of this Englishes and local color students. I told you uh, English is undergoing lot of evolution. Lot of lot of words are being included into the language. Now let us go to the summary of uh, today's lesson. And the lesson outlines and depicts the history of international language. I told you the history, how history, I mean, how English has become, uh, how English has originated, then the development of English moving from its positions, means supreme positions to uh, facing challenges. How English is becoming an international language, that is lingua franca. It is becoming a common language. People, wherever they go, they are using English. And how native speakers will likely be left behind as bilingualism becomes a prized skill. If they are very confident of their own language and they hesitate to learn other languages, it is going to affect them. It is going to leave them behind, it seems, students. And there is an interesting fact the Spanish is on the race and it is going to defeat English, it seems, very soon. So this is the summary of the lesson, students. Hope you have understood uh, the lesson. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to uh, prepare the comprehension question, students, very soon. The link will be posted in the comment section as well as the description box. You can go through the question and answers there. If you have any queries, put them in the comment box. And then if you really made any sense of this uh, tutorial, please like, share and subscribe. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Let us meet up in the next video. Bye-bye. Take care.